So what in the heck is coenzyme Q10 and why should you care? Well, our coenzyme Q10, or CoQ10 for short, was initially discovered in the late 1950s in the United States. When it was initially discovered, um, scientists didn't really know what to do with it or what it could be used for. In 1972, researchers in Italy actually revealed that deficiency in this stuff was related to heart disease. Now, one of the biggest causes of heart disease is high blood pressure. What high blood pressure does is push up against artery walls. Now, these artery walls can't let the pressure damage them, so they have to push back, sort of like a, a lineman in, in football. Now, when they push back, it makes the pathway narrow and contributes to blockage and decreases the blood to where it's needed, like the heart, and, of course, leads to a heart attack. Now, another major contributor uh, which you could probably guess would be smoking, not exercising, eating crappy foods. So we all know a lack of CoQ10 is a contributor to heart disease, but its true role is to convert energy into a ATP so cells can use them. Uh, think of ATP as like a battery that is available and cells can only use this battery. Around 95% of the body's energy is produced this way. So if there's no ATP, people die. Now, more energy to the heart means that the heart becomes stronger, can push more nutrients to where they're needed, and it helps reduce the chance of blockage. Now, besides helping the heart, um, this nutrient um, can also help with lowering blood pressure, may help with athletic performance, as well as aging. Now, the ideal dosage amounts of COQ10 depends on the person, but anything under 1,200 mg's a day is safe. If someone takes above this amount, they can experience some negative effects like vomiting, not being able to sleep, headaches, low blood pressure, fatigue, chest pains. The good news is that we create CoQ10 in our bodies every day, but the bad news is when we get older, we create less of it. Now, one of the best ways to, can, to get coenzyme Q10 is through a dietary supplement, which you could probably guess, right? The fascinating thing about dietary supplements is that they can be tremendously helpful, yet they are usually confusing and sometimes can be harmful. Now, should there be some type of helpful guide out there that can clear the muddy waters for people? Well, I looked and I couldn't find much beside a bunch of websites trying to sell their stuff. So I created one. Uh, the report I made goes over how to spot a safe brand from one that's risky. Talks about doses, amounts, minerals, herbs, vitamins, and the role of government um, agencies, which surprised me. The best part is this guide, this report is completely free. So check it out. Just click on the link below this video, and I hope you enjoy it.